In this episode of Pop Culture Weekly, I talk with William H. Macy and Sam Waterston. Let's go! Welcome to Pop Culture Weekly with Kyle McMahon from iHeartRadio. Your pop culture news, views, reviews, and celebrity interviews on all the movies, TV, music, and pop culture you crave weekly. Here's Kyle McMahon. Na, na, na. Hello and welcome to episode 96 of Pop Culture Weekly. I am Kyle McMahon and I thank you for listening, obviously, and coming and joining me. Today I'm really excited because there is a new show out today called The Dropout and it is all about the Theranos drama. I guess you could say, like real life drama that, you know, followed Elizabeth Holmes as she was a literal dropout and then went on to create essentially a a fake company and scam people out of millions and millions and millions of dollars to the tune of her becoming the youngest female billionaire in the United States. And then it, of course, gloriously blew up. So Amanda Seyfried is starring in The Dropout as Elizabeth. So I have watched it. It is really, 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 really good. And it also stars William H. Macy, um, uh, Laurie Metcalf, Sam Waterston, Kurtwood Smith. It's just got the cast is absolutely incredible. And the series is really, 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 really good. So. For this episode, I talk with William H. Macy and Sam Waterston, and we're going to start with Sam. Sam, who you you may know from a little show called Law and Freakin' Order, he was on Law and Order, or I say he was, he is on Law and Order, you know, was for the first run, which was like 20 seasons or something, and then it just debuted again today as kind of a, you know... Not a, I don't want to say a reboot, but it came back, kind of like the X-Files did. So Sam, besides being incredible, was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actor for his role in The Killing Fields. He's a Tony Award nominee. He is a three-time Emmy Award nominee for his role as Jack McCoy in Law & Order. He's received 11 Screen Actors Guild Award noms for Law & Order. And one, one, uh, and he received three primetime Emmy noms for I'll Fly Away and two Golden Globes awards for that as well. Crazy, crazy, crazy the caliber of this man's work. And, you know, if you don't know him from Law and Order or any of these other things that I mentioned, his acting credits are freaking insane. He played Nick Carraway in the original Great Gatsby back in the se- uh, 70s. And Nixon on the basis of sex, that's just on the uh, movie side. On the TV side, he has starred in The Glass Menagerie, Oppenheimer, I'll Fly Away, Tales from the Crypt, another one of my favorites, the Law & Order movies. He's been in Family Guy, Law & Order SVU, and Law & Order Trial by Jury. I mean, it's just his list goes on and on and on. Oh, and of course, Grace and Frankie which is such a great show, Uh, and he's been on that for the entire run so far. So he plays, well, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you listen to who he plays. So here it is, my interview with the incredible Sam Waterston. Thank you, sir, for speaking with me. I appreciate it. Deja vu all over again. It is. <laughs> so uh, your character was, you know, a very was a very real person. Um, do you see him as villainous in any way in regards to, um, you know, what happened? No, I don't. I think he was a dupe, uh, and that it had really tragic consequences in his family. Uh, because of what happened between him and his grandson. And, and you know, some of the ramifications, the, the, what it cost his family in terms of money and all of that is only 
lightly touched upon in the show, but it really was an awful mess and a terrible tragedy, which I believe was ironed out before he passed away, which is a great thing, but still the damage was done. It, it, and, and so, no, I don't think he, he, I don't think he meant harm, but he embraced harm because he was being loyal to the things that he thought were true. He was, he was fooled. And do you think that there is a lesson for us as a viewer in, in his story, in his, you know, oh, arch? Yes, totally. I think there is that. I th- and I think it is humility uh, about your own ability to see what's real and what's not, especially when you're being told things that you really hope, really want to be true. And, and, when, and when money is a factor, um, that can turn your head too, because there was money to be made if Elizabeth Holmes was right, and there was money to be lost if you faced the fact that she wasn't telling the truth. So, uh, and, you know, it's hard for everybody and we all need to take that seriously because we are being fooled all the time and much too often. Yeah, and I love that. You know, you said humility and and a huge part of that is, like you say, it's happening, you know, all the time to all of us. And, you know, sometimes we have to put aside what we want and think about what it is as it is. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and I yeah. think I think his his story in this is um, a great example of that. And you mentioned his grandson, which, uh, you know, is for me, I was very close with my grandparents um, and I could not imagine having to go up against, you know, one of my grandparents. I mean, it's unfathomable to me. And, uh, you know, his grand his grandson essentially did this, um, but not to attack his grandfather, but just as like a kind of a moral thing, you know, I have you ever as an actor, you know, that to me, it seems like very, I don't want to say juicy, but uh, it seems like a very complicated and rewarding character to play where you have all of these moral dilemmas going on in this, you know, thing that has kind of gotten out of control. How do you feel about that? Well, I think, first of all, Tyler is a a genuine hero. Um, What we expect of heroes, that they will say what they see without fear of consequences. Um, And that when they when they have their hands on the truth, they won't abandon it. It, Mm. It's it's quite extraordinary, really a a beautiful story. Um, So that in itself is uh is a great thing and do you feel you know you've had a have a incredibly successful career playing all sorts of roles do you prefer um car- you know projects that are based on true people is it different for you as an actor well i think as long as people understand that uh that this is uh, a fiction based on reality, then I feel okay. If I don't want people to think that when they look at me playing George Schultz, that I am him, or that what I am representing is him. I I don't know him. I never met him. Uh, uh, I never. So this is a, a product of what I imagine it would be like to be him. I make no pretense that it's him. And, you know, do you, would you, if he were alive today, is that something you'd be nervous about meeting him or or doing this portrayal of somebody? Yes, I think I would have been nervous to meet him anyway because he's such an impressive figure. Um, But yes, this would have made it uh, even more (laughs) nerve-wracking. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
Oh, I was just going to thank you so much for your time and for speaking with me. I can't wait till everybody sees this. Uh, Mr. Waterston, thank you so much for speaking with me today. You're so welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Have a great day. Absolutely incredible actor, incredible person. The man is in his 80s working like he was in his 30s or 40s. He's, you know, one of those bests, one of those classics that is hard to find today. So such a gracious guy. Thank you so much, Sam. I am honored to have interviewed him. All right. Speaking of honored to interview, William freaking H. freaking Macy. I mean, hello. This man is really doesn't even need an introduction, but I'm going to do it anyway. He's won two Emmy Awards, four Screen Actors Guild Awards for his uh, portrayal on um, Speechless. Of course, earned a Best Supporting Actor Academy Award for Fargo. I said speechless, I mean shameless. This man has been in everything. Searching for Bobby Fischer, Ghost of Mississippi, Air Force One, Boogie Nights, Wag the Dog, Pleasantville, Psycho, Jurassic Park 3. And that's just on the movie side. On the TV side, he was in the original Equalizer series in the 80s. He was also on Law and Order, a few different episodes. And of course, for 10 different episodes, or for 10 different years as opposed to 10 of the same years. For 10 years, he played the lead, Frank Gallagher, in Shameless, 11 different seasons. This man is just, he's William H. Macy, so here he is. Thank you so much, sir, for joining me. I really appreciate it. <clears throat> so your character uh, is very real. Um, he has an entire complicated, I think you could say, history of his own. Did you bring that to the role in uh, in in the series? And what I mean by that is, did you dig into his history and bring all of that history and baggage to your performance? Um, I I I googled him, but. Um... It were the writers are the ones who brought it all in, and he. You're right; he's a very complicated fellow, and um, you know, as they presented it in the script, and I, I take, I think it's probably exactly what happened. He got his feathers ruffled. She grew up next door to him. He knew her as a gawky 14-year-old. And when she decided she was going to invent a medical device, which is what Richard did for a living and had gotten rich doing it and didn't come over and ask for his advice, he he was pissed off. <laughs> and then I think as the story unfolds, because he's smart and because that's what he did for a living, he smelled a rat. He thought, this is too good to be true. And in fact, it was. Do Is it hard for you or what is it like for you when you're playing a, a real person? Is that, Do you find that easier as an actor, uh, harder, no different? I think it comes with responsibility, especially someone who's still alive. Um, um, uh, but at the same time, this is a fictionalized story. So I'm, I'm hoping that everybody who, uh, the real people who appear as characters in this thing realize that uh, it's Hollywood. So we didn't get it all right. But I think the basic story, I'm hoping Richard will see what I did and concur that that's what went on. Um, but to answer your question, yes, I feel a responsibility when I'm playing someone. And does that make you nervous at all? Like if you came, you know, if you met him, for instance, uh, you know, are you like yeah. nervous? Are you scared? Are you like? Uh, I would be nervous to meet him. I, I, but uh, truthfully, I do hope I get to meet him someday. And I hope he's pleased enough with what I did. Um, he's a complicated guy. And... Um, um, I don't know. I've played a couple of it, it's I've had done this a couple of times where I played someone that actually existed. And um, so far, it's worked out. So mm -hmm. I would be nervous to meet him. And is it hard for you as an actor to 
um, kind of put personal feelings aside of whatever it is, particularly in something like like this, which is so uh, polarizing, you know, to so many people. Is it hard for you to put your personal feelings about it aside and you just throw yourself into the role or how do you handle that? Well, it's kind of what I do for a living. Um, <laughs> my personal feelings don't have anything to do with it. As a matter of fact, that's why so many actors say, I'd like to play the bad guy. The bad guy is is more fun, uh, usually more flamboyant. But no, it's my job to figure out what makes the character tick and to be that character's champion, to present him in the best light always and to figure out good and wholesome reasons for what he does that's my job and um the better you do that and i've done very well doing this you take a really despicable sort of person like jerry lundergaard or frank gallagher and you put a, a human face to him and then the audience is a little fucked up <laughs> they go i like him but i have no right to like him what's What's wrong with me? I like doing that. It's a good way to make a living. And and I think you've done, I think there's nobody that would uh, argue that you haven't done amazingly well doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so for you, when you do a, a role like this, do you prefer uh, or do you prefer um, the kind of based on real events sort of thing? Or does it not matter? You, you just love a juicy role. I think I just love a juicy role. Um, this one I think has more resonance because it played out in front of the entire country and it's like a Greek tragedy. It's uh, It's got all of the elements of a big tragedy. Um, who's poisoning the wells? Well, guess what? It's you, you're poisoning the wells. I think Elizabeth was a little bit of a victim at the beginning of this thing. She had an idea for a magnificent medical device which would save lives and make people's lives easier so she went to silicon valley and hung out a shingle and said anybody want to invest and everybody did but at a certain point when she couldn't come up with the goods she went to the dark side i guess once you're on the cover of time magazine as woman of the year it's hard to step back and say oh never mind it didn't work yeah i i totally agree thank you sir so much for speaking with me you are absolutely amazing in this as you are in everything you've done and i appreciate you taking the time Thank you so much. Thanks for saying that, too. Thank you. Have a great day. William freaking H. freaking Macy, everybody. I love he's just a brilliant actor. Today is a really good episode. OK, two of the best actors ever on our little show, guys, our little show that you have made big, by the way. You continue to share it and hit me up on social and, you know, just. Continue to make it grow. You're reviewing it on Apple Podcasts, which, by the way, I'd like to read a new review from Apple Podcasts, and this is by Spooky Lukey. So Spooky Lukey says, I really love this show. I really like the interviews, and it's really funny. Makes me smile every time I see a new episode notification. Kyle is probably the best interviewer in the business. Love this guy and this show. You, Spooky Lukey, first of all, I am always willing to be bribed for flattery. So you have won yourself a Pop Culture Weekly prize pack with some digital codes to some brand new movies and a few uh, 4K Blu-rays and some merch. And so email me via the show notes. I and you know, obviously you have to prove that it's you, Spooky Lukey, and I will have them get this out to you. So thank you for your review. And you, you could be the next person that gets theirs read on air and win a prize pack. All you have to do is review it uh, honestly, you know, whether it's one star or five stars, review our show honestly. It could be you winning that prize pack next. So Anyway, you, thank you for listening. You continue to blow up the show, and I cannot do it without you. We're doing it together. Please hit me up on social, at PopCulturePodCA on Twitter, uh, at KMAC Music on Twitter for my own personal one, PopCultureWeekly.com to get all the latest in between shows. I will see you next week. I love you. We out. Thank you for listening to Pop Culture Weekly. 
Hear all the latest at popcultureweekly.com. William freaking age.